Hi everyone, welcome to this week's episode. Got a lot going on in here today. <laughs> we are, as you can see, in a completely different factory. Sea Wind have moved from the old factory to this ginormous one. I think that it will become very obvious over the coming weeks and months uh, why that move was necessary. For one, this factory allows them to bring all of their production here. It's so much bigger, it's absolutely ginormous. They have the overhead cranes, which are essential for so many different build processes. And they also have the room to bring the 1600s over, which you can see just behind me there. So this is a brand new factory at Sea Wind. If you follow Sea Wind on their YouTube channel or Facebook, then you may have already seen some of this already. But for those of you who are just following our journey, then you wouldn't have seen this before. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Let's get on with it. Welcome to another episode of Sailing Ruby Rose. Today, it's a seminal episode. It's a milestone. There is a deck. The deck is being hoisted into position after months of work of using the deck to template the headlinings. It is now going to be lowered slowly into place and those fittings done. Now, this is super important and it's important because if you're designing a monohull and you're building a monohull, the deck almost goes on last because you've got bulkheads and you can do all the internal fittings because this deck mold has all the furniture built in. Once this has gone on, then you can start doing the internal fit out. And that means that we're going to see a huge ramping up of progress over the coming months as all the kind of internal fit out comes. So once this is done, we are clearly on a new pathway. Stay watching. This is going to be absolutely fascinating. And so finally, let's look at the deck going on. It is terrifying to see it swinging up there. They use the overhead cranes to gently lower the deck onto the hulls and they just line it up for a dry fit to make sure that it actually is going to sit in place absolutely perfectly. And in this case, here's a lot of workers just gently slowing down the descent of the deck so that actually it fits. And James and Mr. Khan, everything is inspected to make sure that everything fits perfectly and then that is where the fine tuning starts they will use they will file back small parts where there are catches until the perfect fit is achieved uh, both of these need yeah. cutting mr ha they try to uh, top, um, make it along. and then down obviously this can take some time with the first boat as the two parts have never been married up before absolutely fascinating process for me i found it to be terrifying to see the crane just swinging with this huge fiberglass deck overhead. But the end result is that there is a deck that fits absolutely perfectly onto the hulls and the owner of hull one will be very, very pleased to see this all in place now. So uh, a really fantastic day at the factory. And because of the complexity of this sort of job, by the end of the working day, they still hadn't done everything. So I had to go back the next day to see exactly the final fit. So here we go. Last day, the final fit of the deck to the hull. It is 7.30 in the morning. It is baking hot. And behind me, I have hulls one, two, and three. Now, something you're gonna notice. Over this shoulder, we have the deck, the first deck being dry fitted into Ruby Rose 2. And they're just dry fitting the deck to make sure that it fits all of them. Today, we are gonna show the bonding, the actual placing of the deck onto hull one and the final bonding. And this is super important. It's a bigger milestone than the engines, and I'm gonna explain why. With a monohull, you do most of the fit out before the deck goes on, but because this deck is so complex and so much of the furniture and the helm stations and everything is built into the deck, once this is on, then the good stuff can go in, the plumbing, the electrics, and all the features that are gonna make this the most epic sailboat. I am super pumped, and I hope you are too. Welcome back. We've got Mike Reese, our friend. He is the general manager of Seawind. And as you can see behind us, the deck is going onto hole one and he is super busy. So Mike, tell us everything you're going to tell us today. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's a big milestone for us getting the deck on. You've got two components that have, you know, never seen each other before, right? And it's all, it's all done on a 3D system. So everything's designed 3D. It's all CNC cut on the, uh, for the tooling, but there's still a lot of manual processes that go through. So there's still, you know, the opportunity that things aren't quite right. So you know, the case of having to go through and, and just making sure we do, we get a, a dry fit, making sure that everything's touching, because obviously we've got to get the deck to fit on the main bulkhead, the aft bulkheads, collision bulkheads, to make sure we've got a really good fit. So yep. quite a process of, of uh, dry fitting, and then we'll then bring it down properly, and then we'll do our bonding and our glass work. Yeah. One thing I was saying to people before is that 
the difference between this construction and monohull construction is that with monohull construction, the deck goes on much later. You do all the fit out before and then the deck mm. gets bonded on. But because of the integral furniture, this has to go on fairly early in the construction process, right? Yeah, typically. But what we'll actually do with this compared to our other sea winds, we will actually put the deck on slightly later. Our other sea winds have got a, a, a top side flange and then a deck that actually comes across down and then joins external. Whereas this has got a slightly different uh, production technique. So this has got a top side flange that comes up and then the deck's coming down on top. Yep. And that's where we're going for a, we have a bonded hull and deck join, but then for us, we're actually going to do a lot of glass work underneath as well. So we're kind of taking a, a bit of a belts and braces approach of getting it very strong because see, a lot of monohulls will just be bonded around that flange and that's sufficient. Yep. We're a bit old school. We've always glassed all of our decks without any adhesive. So this boat, we're doing a transition. It's a bit of a hybrid. We are bonding it all the way around, but we're also doing glass work in all of our key structural areas okay. just to make sure we've got absolutely no questions asked. So we get this all the time, join. bonded or glass, glassed or yeah. bonded, so both hybrid. So welcome back. We have James. James, the production manager for the 1370. But I want to talk to James about the bonding of the deck to the hull. James, thank you for taking your time. Sure. What's happening today? So we're actually dry fitting the deck at the moment. Uh, we started yesterday, continuing today. So it's a bit of a learning process for us to get this on because of the complexity and the tolerances that we've allowed on this are much finer than we've done traditionally. So we've kind of been taking our time to make sure we get it to fit and fit right and look good. So once we've done that, then we're gonna start then the gluing and taping process. Okay. Obviously there's critical areas that are high load um, where we will be glass taping all of those. Um, you mentioned in plenty of your early videos about mast bulkheads and yep. things like that. So obviously where we have chain plates coming through, attachment points, bulkhead intersecting the decks around the transom, around the front, other high load areas, they will be all glass taped. I mean, they're glued as well, but the, the glass taping is added. Yep. It's not just relying on the glue. We will have some mechanical fasteners in those areas because there's a cleat or a stanchion or some other blocks, clutches or whatever it may be that assists with that, that bond in those cool. areas. We're taking our time a little bit. We want to make sure we get it right. It's the first course, one, course, so yeah. uh, we're not going to rush it. We're doing a combination of glue and taping but we're not taping everywhere. We're taping in high load areas. But for the glue, we did a bit of uh, research. We've done some testing. We've gone down the uh, metal acrylate base glue method. And this machine here that we're looking at is our dispensing machine for that glue. There's a part A, which is in that drum, and a part B, which is on the other side. So it's a two part mix just like if you're uh, similar to epoxy or uh, polyester resins where you've got a, a resin and a hardener, this is the same. This is a 10 to one mix, which is a very typical mix ratio for this type of glue. Each worker has a gun. You can see here we have part A, actually you can see on here part A, part B. Um, they're the two different glues. You have air coming in here, which drives the machine, a trigger. There's also, I won't put it on, but there's a nozzle that comes on here. And this nozzle has a plastic mixer that, that goes through the center of that. You can see there's two holes there. So you've got part A and part B. So it's important that those two don't uh, mix with each other. Otherwise you end up gluing up the gun. Connects that hole into the nozzle. And then the nozzle has a special spiral insert that then allows those two chemicals to mix together so by the time it comes out the end of the nozzle thoroughly mixed and ready for use thank you james that's super um informative and kind of like another whole dive into how this boat is being built this is a carbon coach roof or rather it will be the coach roof such an important part gives you a real concept of exactly how big our living area is going to be but today we're going to watch this whole process as the carbon coach roof is lifted out kind of like flipped over turtle style and that will give us a huge piece of carbon fiber real estate which will 
form the top of our boat. On last week's episode, you saw the coach roof being demolded, which was obviously a crucial step. The idea had been that they were going to flip it over and place it on its stand in the old factory. However, they were unable to do this as it turns out with the forklift. So this is just another reason why the move to this new factory with the overhead cranes is so crucial for Seawind's production. So the next stage is flipping the coach roof over so that it can rest on its dedicated stand where it will wait to be fitted to the deck. This is done easily now as the overhead cranes in the new factory do this job within moments, as we can see in the footage here. So there we have it. The coach roof is on its stand, ready to be fitted to the deck. So if you enjoyed that, give us a like, give us a thumbs up. We'll be back next week as we kind of like watch the deck and the hull bonded together and show you the internal joins. So listen, see you again next week. Keep safe. Thank you. Goodbye.